When people think of classic Japanese video game developers, who do you think comes to mind? For some of you, you may have answered with Shigeru Miyamoto, Satoshi Tajiri, Hideo Kojima, or if you're one of those edgy folks, Hideki Kamiya, who I heard is notorious for banning people on Twitter that even pisses them off slightly. However, I feel like most people, including myself for the longest time until a friend told me, tend to overlook the true OG, the one who truly revolutionized the gaming industry. I'm talking about the greatest of all time, Gunpei Yokoi. So some of you may be asking, who was Yokoi and what makes him so important? Well, we're about to find out. Of course, we gotta go back to the beginning. Gunpei Yokoi was born on September 10th, 1941 in Kyoto, Japan. And if that year seems very familiar to many of you, that was the year when Japan officially joined World War II. If you're interested in the topic, I did an entire video on the subject, which you can watch later. This was a very destructive time for the country, as many of its cities were being firebombed by the Americans. However, unlike cities such as Tokyo, Osaka, and Yokohama, Kyoto was spared the ravages of war. Now, Kyoto was one of the original targets for the atomic bomb to be dropped on, but it was saved due to the protests of American Secretary of War, Henry Stinson, who spent his honeymoon in the city and had a love for it. Now, I know what some of you are saying. Berg, this history lesson is nice and all, but what does this have to do with Yokoi? Well, there are two reasons I'm telling you this. One, to show that video game history could have been very different if the bomb dropped on Kyoto instead of Hiroshima. And two, there really isn't much information on Yokoi's early life. Sure, you got a few things, such as him being very interested in toys and machines, but nothing really much I can find. There wasn't much information about his childhood or how he was raised. The story of Yokoi doesn't officially begin until 1965, where Yokoi graduated from Doshisha University with a degree in electronics. He was then hired by Nintendo, which was a different company back then. While yes, it was a gaming company, it mostly focused on board games and playing cards, specifically Hanafuda cards. What are Hanafuda cards? Well, I'm not really sure. Someone in the comments please explain the whole thing to me. In 1966, Yukori created a toy from an extender he would use to keep himself amused while he was on break when working at Nintendo's factory. The company's president, Hiroshi Yamauchi, noticed this and was impressed with his skills. Yamauchi is another interesting person in video game history that deserves his own video. Anyway, Yukori's invention would later become the Ultra Hand, and it would become an instant success. Also, I love on the box art, it's just a bunch of kids taking their dad's wallet. Like, this is how many parents felt when they had to buy this thing. The Australian box art of the toy would have the Ultra Hand taking a joey from a mother kangaroo's pouch. Because Australia. Because of this success, it inspired Nintendo to branch out of making toys and other kinds of games. Yokoi would go on to make more toys for the company, such as the 10 billion barrel puzzle, a baseball toy called Oh the Ultra Machine, and a love tester. However, in 1974, with a recession that led to less toys being sold, Nintendo wanted to move to making video games. They wanted Yokoi to work on them, and he accepted. While on a bullet train, Yokoi noticed a businessman who was just playing with a calculator. Yokoi had an idea for a type of handheld game that would help pass the time. He would then bring this up with President Yamauchi while driving him to a business meeting, and Yamauchi, who was very interested, gave him the go-ahead. In 1980, the Game & Watch would be released to the public. Now, looking at it by today's standards, the Game & Watch looks primitive and cheap, but back then it really revolutionized handheld gaming and would be the prototype for Yokoi's most well-known creation, but we'll save that for later. In 1981, Yokoi would be instrumental in the creation of one of gaming's most iconic figures. You see, Shigeru Miyamoto brought to Yamauchi a game idea where a guy would jump over barrels thrown by a giant gorilla to save his girlfriend. Yamauchi cleared the plan, but the thing was, Miyamoto was too inexperienced. Now, I'm not saying Miyamoto didn't know what he was doing, he had helped create video games in the past, but the only thing he had to his name was a shooter game called Shara. So Yokoi would help Miyamoto with designs, reworking the stuff that didn't work, and improving on mechanics that did. Later that year, Donkey Kong was released to the public. And I don't think I need to tell you how important Donkey Kong was as it truly helped put Nintendo on the map and make it a household name. While yes, Miyamoto is the creator and does serve the credit, had it not been for Yokoi, the original plans for Donkey Kong would have been a, well, a jumbled mess. After the success of Donkey Kong, Yokoi would go on to work with Miyamoto on another project and spin-off of Donkey Kong, the Mario Brothers. 
N no, not super. That comes in a little later. Now this time the two were equals. Miyamoto thought of the world and would name the Jumpman character from Donkey Kong, Mario. In honor of Mario Sagale, an Italian-American landlord from Seattle who would get angry at Nintendo staff for not paying the rent on time. However, Yokoi was the one who suggested that Mario would have these different powers in multiplayer, thus allowing the creation of Luigi. And as the saying goes, the rest is history. While the original Mario Brothers game didn't do well compared to say Donkey Kong, it was the start of a huge franchise with Mario being the biggest name in all of media and everyone knowing the Italian plumber's face. Again, while Miyamoto is the creator and does deserve the credit, it was Yokoi's knowledge of gameplay mechanics that truly paved the way for this multi-billion dollar franchise. That being said, Yokoi really wanted to go back to being in the driver's seat and would go on to create his own video games. In 1985, the Famicom, or as we know in the rest of the world, the Nintendo Entertainment System, was released to widespread acclaim. Managing to bring home consoles to the mainstream and save the video game industry after the unfortunate crash of 1983. Yokoi would focus his attention on the home console market. Here he would create an accessory to the NES called Rob Robot. Rob, or Robotic Operating Buddy, was supposed to be a support player while playing some of his games. These games would be Gyromite and Stack Up. While cool and futuristic at the time, it's still an incredible piece of ingenuity and was used to promote the NES. Rob would sadly fall into obscurity as even Nintendo didn't pay much attention to it. In fact, truth be told, I only learned about Rob thanks to the angry video game nerd. And yes, he's in Smash, but unless you're one of those rare Major League gamers, I have not seen anyone main Rob. Unless you're like a hardcore Nintendo fan, who here is actually talking about Rob the Robot? Now that being said, I am talking about Rob, so I can eat my own words there. Still, Yokoi would make his own video games, and in 1986, he would get a chance to show what he got. Let's start with his second game first. You'll find out the reasons why I switched around in a bit. This game will be known as Kid Icarus. While the main character, Pit, is not as famous compared to his under Nintendo counterparts, in fact, for the longest time, before his appearance in Smash Bros, if you were to ask anyone about Kid Icarus, most likely you would get the version that appeared in that weird Captain N cartoon. That was a real cool move, Kavinicus. Hey, thanks, Kavinicus. Speaking of her Heinicus, look! Just doing my duty, your Heinicus. Eeny, meeny, my mocus. This is the warp zone into which I go again. Shut the fuck up! But aside from that, Kid Icarus would develop a cult following among gamers. And as mentioned before, Pitt's appearance in Smash has definitely brought new life to the series. But his most famous creation is Metroid. Now I've heard many fans complain about the original Metroid and how overrated it is, and I can see where they're coming from. But you also gotta see, for at the time it came out, this was amazing. Awesome gameplay, great music, and the greatest twist of all the video games at the time, Samus was actually a woman. What the fuck? Now of course everyone knows this, but again, you have to look at the time period. But the idea of a woman being a badass and main character was seen as unbelievable back then. Hell, it still kind of is today, depending on who you ask. But Samus definitely paved the way for other awesome female video game characters as main leads, such as Laura Croft, Jill Valentine, and Bayonetta. I mean, Samus is a 6 foot 3 Amazon goddess, like god damn what a woman. And Metro would inspire a franchise that at first in recent years seemed like it was dead, but it recently made a comeback. At least until Nintendo decides to shelve it and not to touch it for a long time like their other games that aren't Pokemon, Zelda, and Mario. Speaking of which, Metro was actually a part of Nintendo's Big 3 before being replaced by Pokemon. Still, Yokoi's contribution to developing video games showed how skilled he was, but he wanted to go back to his roots on creating systems. Taking inspiration from the Game & Watch, he would create something that would change the field of handheld gaming. And in 1989, the Game Boy would be released to the public. Now for many of you young folks out there, the Game Boy doesn't seem like it's anything special. But for those who grew up in the 80s, 90s, and to a lesser extent the 2000s, know how popular this system was. The Game Boy's impact cannot be understated as it still continues to inspire many Nintendo products to this day. With its constant variations such as the color, the advance in SP, and especially the DS and the Switch. The Game Boy truly revolutionized how gaming would be done. 
1995, Yokoi and his team would go on to make another video game system called The Virtual Boy, a gaming system that was supposed to be a virtual reality 3D simulator. While on the surface it looked great, it unfortunately had a lot of problems. It was too expensive, heavy, and bat on the eyes as the graphics were based on this dark red coloring that made it hard to see. Because of this, the Virtual Boy was considered a commercial and financial failure. Yokoi stated he wanted more time to rework the bugs on the Virtual Boy, but Nintendo didn't pay much attention to it as they were more focused on the Nintendo 64. So after all that, Yokoi decided to leave the company after almost 30 years with Nintendo. He was going to make his own company with Blackjack and Hookers. Okay, probably not those things, but you get the idea. Unfortunately, tragedy would strike. On October 4th, 1997, when driving with his assistant on the expressway, Yokoi got into a horrible car accident. While his assistant survived with a fractured rib, Yokoi sadly died from impact, thus cutting his life short at the age of 56. So, what makes Gunpei Yokoi so special? Well, if you made it far to this video, it seems pretty obvious. The man's ingenuity and creativity helped bring Nintendo to the forefront and revolutionized the gaming industry. Many things we take for granted in gaming today, Yokoi was the one who started it. Whether it was helping Miyamoto working on Donkey Kong and Mario, creating the Metroid franchise, or the creation of the great granddaddy of modern handheld gaming. Hell, despite the Virtual Boy's failure, it would inspire the PlayStation VR system. So when discussing video game developers, do not sleep on Yokoi because this man has truly done a lot for the industry and his actions should not be overlooked. I normally don't speak at the end of this, but I'd like to give a special thanks to my friend Mikhail Gadio who taught me about Yokoi, which made me want to do this video. Another special thanks to Faceless Massacre for making the thumbnail for me, really cool guy there. Anyway, y'all know the drill, like, share, subscribe, blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. Have a nice day now!